Today on the caucus, as hopes for an ambitious budget deal increasingly rest on the so-called Gang of Six, Jackie Combs takes a closer look at the group and their proposal. Also, John Harwood reports from Iowa on Tim Pawlenty's make-or-break month in the Hawkeye State. The good news is that today, a group of senators, the Gang of Six, uh, Democrats and Republicans, I guess now Gang of Seven because uh, one additional Republican senator added on, put forward a proposal that is broadly consistent with the approach that I've urged. The reemergence of the Gang of Six and their uh, broad deficit reduction plan comes just four days after the talks between the White House and congressional leaders had reached an impasse. The Gang of Six is a bipartisan group of senators that's been around really in the, in the background for about seven months. That they seem to have come to a uh, stalemate uh, two months ago when one of their members, conservative Republican Tom Coburn of Oklahoma, dropped out. But they came together sort of as a result of seeing this impasse between the White House and Congress. They thought maybe their moment has returned. We've had our ups and downs. One of our members left, came back. It's a tough assignment. It isn't easy. Is it going to pass? Uh, I think it has good. It's the only thing I know that has real potential right now. What gives this group a, a lot of credence with other members is that it includes one of the most, if not the most conservative Republican in the Senate and one of the most liberal. And not insignificantly, it also includes Kent Conrad, who is the chairman of the Senate Budget Committee. Not a bad position to hold if you're trying to get something done here. And it's not the holy grail because it, at this point it's just a five page outline with some really controversial pieces. What's important about this is it signaled that there is a broader than known consensus for some bipartisan deal that includes both deep spending cuts and higher revenues. And it would sort of be the blueprint for beyond August 2nd. They have to find a way to get this debt limit increased, but beyond that it could be the blueprint for action. Despite the warm uh, embrace, I'd say not just from President Obama, but from 43 other senators who showed up for a closed door meeting yesterday to hear what is this Gang of Six plan all about. Despite that, there is no indication whatsoever that this could break the um, resolve of House Republicans, the House Republican majority, to uh, entertain the idea of higher revenue tax increases in the coming years. So it's still not clear how this uh, poses a way out, but it does definitely isolate the House Republicans to some extent and puts in further pressure on them, as do some recent polls, to show some compromise, and that would include on revenues. I'm here in Urbandale, Iowa, just outside Des Moines, at the campaign headquarters of former Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty on a scorching summer day. And this is a time when the heat is on the Pawlenty campaign over the next several weeks. The reason is he's been lagging in polls nationally, also in the state of Iowa. He is strapped for cash, only $1.4 million in the most recent financial report, and yet he must spend money, invest heavily to try to do well in the Iowa straw poll in Ames on August the 13th. That's because that's a key momentum generator for someone like him from a neighboring state who needs to break through here. So what you have is field staffers like the ones you see behind me making phone calls, trying to get activists out to the straw poll in Ames to other Palenti events. And what he's trying to do is demonstrate, as his campaign manager Nick Ayers told me, that he can not only appeal across the Republican spectrum, but he can also excite the Republican base. Why is that important? Well, Michelle Bachman from his home state of Minnesota has jumped into the race. She clearly is a Tea Party favorite who's ignited the Republican faithful. And Rick Perry, the governor of Texas, is making noises about getting in soon. He is also somebody generates heat with the base. Big competition for Tim Pawlenty, if not in the straw poll, soon after that. His strategy depends on winning the Iowa caucuses in January, then going in and confronting Mitt Romney in the state of New Hampshire, going on to South Carolina and Florida. It's a big challenge for Tim Pawlenty. A lot of people are writing obituaries for his campaign, but we've seen in many campaigns past, it's a long process. This is a wide open race in particular. Long way to go, and some candidates who've been counted out have made it back into the race like John McCain just four years ago. Tim Pawlenty hopes to repeat that in the next few weeks will be an early indication of whether he can do that.